Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your very first video of mine. Today we were supposed to be posting my London vlog but as some of you will know if you follow me on Instagram, my luggage didn't make it back from London so I've now been just over two weeks since I've been back and I don't have my suitcase back yet and my memory card with some of my vlog footage is in that suitcase. So. I couldn't post the vlog this week because that is the situation that I'm in. I've been sort of realising as the time has gone on in the last two weeks what it is I'm really missing from my suitcase and how I've handled not having that and what that indicates about my sort of changed beauty behaviours. If you are completely new to my channel then you will not be aware I used to have an unhealthy relationship with shopping and spending and that particularly sort of came out within spending on beauty products. I was always powered by the desire for the promise that beauty products held. It was during a time when I was really really low in self-esteem, was in a really bad place mental health wise and Beauty had always been um, something that I really enjoyed, it had always been a hobby of mine but when I went into this sort of bad place, the buying of beauty products became this sort of hit of serotonin that I would get and I would feel really good and then I would crash down and I would do it all again. And it got to a point where I'm more interested in that hit of serotonin from buying stuff than I actually was in using any of the beauty products that I was buying. In fact, it was so about the buying because part of the way that my kind of issues were was that I just, I had absolutely no energy and um, you know at my absolute worst in terms of my depression like getting in the shower was this like huge surmountable obstacle and um, that I just like I would have burst into tears at the thought of having to get up and get in the shower as ridiculous as that sounds if you've never been in that place. So I certainly, if I was having that much trouble surmounting the obstacles of a basic hygiene routine, as you can more than imagine I was not putting makeup on my face on a daily basis and basically the stuff was coming in, nothing was going out and thankfully I got a bit of help in terms of my mental health and I've left that place and whilst I have definitely still dipped in the last number of years I've never quite been back there, thankfully, which I'm so, so grateful for. But I am still left, even now, with the mountains of stuff that I accumulated when I was shopping and spending in that mindset. In 2018, I went on a no-buy for beauty. I originally thought 2018, one year, would totally solve all my problems. And at the end of 2018, realised that was definitely not the case, that beauty products take so much longer to use up than you sort of think that they will. My no buy continued through 2019, 2020 I did a full no buy, not just beauty products but also just trying to stop consuming and clutter coming into my life in all areas. 2021 was a low buy and 2022 I am back on my no buy. Now the exceptions to the no buy have been when I've been on holiday I've been able to buy things and last year I was able to buy one thing a month so that was my low buy year. I really didn't struggle with the no buy. I entered it in a point where I had so much stuff that I definitely wasn't missing anything. I was really overwhelmed and I really wanted to be doing the no buy at first. I actually found the low buy year harder than my no buys because with the low buy I would kind of activate that sort of shopping muscle and I'd be looking at stuff to want, I'd be looking at stuff to buy and I'd be making those decisions um, and then I'd have to cut it off again. For me being on a no buy has been easier than that starting and stopping. It makes sense because when I was doing it, it didn't start in a problematic way but it just you know spiralled and spiralled and I noticed that want to spiral and spiral when I did my low buy year was that one thing was great but it was a bit like okay now I've done that I want to get another thing and I did just want to keep going and that forcing myself to stop was really really difficult. I feel like I have acknowledged as things have been going on how I've been feeling in different moments. What I haven't really done is sort of sat down and looked at where I started and looked at where I am now and really figured out how I feel about that as such or figured out how those sort of big picture changes have happened because I've been looking at it on a sort of month to month basis. 
either checking in in YouTube videos or just with myself and um, but it's always been very much checking in in the present and not really looking back over what has now been nearly four years so I realized that's been a really kind of long introduction what I thought we would do in the first half of this video is go through the things that I am really missing from my case the things that I have noticed and what I think noticing each of those things has made me sort of realise about the way that my attitude has changed within those four years so let me stop this super long intro and get into that. The first thing that I have really really missed from my case is my Drunk Elephant Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser I think is the official name, um, my Drunk Elephant Makeup Remover. So for the past couple of weeks when I've been wearing makeup I have been taking it off with micellar water. Now I did own micellar water already so I didn't have to purchase that because I was missing my cleansing butter but generally I will only reach for micellar water if I've done a particularly heavy makeup and I'll maybe use it to take the first kind of layer off before I use my Dunk Elephant cleanser so it's not something that I use as a main kind of method of makeup removing usually and I don't mind it but I have been getting these sort of slightly different spots to spots that I would usually get. I'm quite oily so I do get congested so I do need to be quite on top of that with my skincare and around my period I do get whiteheads but they're the sort of ones that you could quite easily pop. They've got quite small heads that you could just kind of and go. Sorry I feel like this is a really sort of strange thing to be discussing but the spots that I've been getting more recently are sort of flat um, and it, you, you could squeeze, but they're not really raised up out of my face. They're quite flat, but they are still, um, you know, the full pus for, sorry, that's a horrible word, isn't it? But it is what it is. So those are the spots that I'm getting. And the only conclusion I can really come to is that it's because I'm removing my makeup with micellar water, which if I'm honest, I'm not massively convinced takes off sort of every last bit the way that my Don Kelvin cleanser does um, and I am cleansing my skin after I use the makeup remover but yeah I'm just I'm presuming that that's where these spots are coming from because I've never had spots like this before. It does seem to me that they are linked to this and I feel like the cleansing is the only thing that has kind of changed quite dramatically and I think I just that's my instinct is that it's to do with the cleansing. So then I was thinking about what do I do in the meantime because basically my case is at Glasgow Airport but it has not been processed yet so I have phoned BA, they have reassured me that it's there, they can see on their tracking that there is a container number but basically there's thousands of containers with bags that haven't made it on flights because like nobody in our flight got their bag basically. We arrived at Glasgow Airport after coming back from London and we were told no, lug no luggage had been loaded onto the flight because there was no staff to load the luggage on the flight. That's happened to us, it's happened to several other people. There's a huge backlog of cases at Glasgow so BA have assured me that my case is fine and that it's going to arrive at some point but it's just a waiting game so that's why I'm not I am a bit annoyed about it, it's obviously inconvenient but um, you, you know I'm, I, they've reassured me that my case is safe so I'm not too worried in that sense but basically that does mean at some point I'm going to get my cleanser back so I was a bit like oh, do I buy a travel size or something like in the meantime just to be cleansing my face properly and it made me realise how much I really like the Drunk Elephant Cleanser because I looked into it and I could get a travel size of the Elmis sort of equivalent cleansing butter or um, the Clinique one and I was just like I don't want these, I want the Drunk Elephant one. So it was quite nice to realise because basically I think back in the day had this happened to me I would have actually probably been really happy. I would have been like this is an excuse for me to just buy everything that was in that case and um, you know to try a new version to go and see what's out there it would have been like it would have been a, an excuse on a plate for me to go and shop in the past whereas I really haven't taken this as an excuse to do that and when I sort of have started going there's things I'm really missing and I really can't be without 
A, I'm in a position where I don't have all the backups that I used to have, so I feel really good about that, um, because as much as, yes, in the past it might have been an excuse on a plate for me to go and shop, I also probably wouldn't even have been that inconvenienced because I would have had so many backups and so many duplicates in almost every category um, in my inventory that I probably wouldn't have noticed not having something for two weeks. So it was quite a nice moment to sort of realise that and it's also made me realise like I'm just not consumed anymore by needing to know what's out there and needing to know what's new. Like I have the drunk elephant one this is actually the second drunk elephant one that I've had. I had it originally then I tried the Inculus one after that, didn't like it as much and went back to the drunk elephant one um, and basically I'm quite happy to just keep purchasing that and I'm really really glad that I'm at that point with that now where I'm like this like constant need that I used to have to know everything in the market, to know what was coming out, to be abreast of the ball to try everything when it's not my job to do that and um, that has gone and that was a really nice moment as well so where that leaves me just now is that I'm still really spotty because I have not actually purchased another cleanser I feel like it would be sod's law the minute I would actually buy something my case would just would um be processed and I would get a, an email to say come pick it up I'm just making do at the moment and I feel like that is huge progress from where I used to be. Because I'm quite spotty, the other thing that I have been really missing is my Sizzly Black Rose Mask that is in my suitcase. And it's really expensive, it's a really luxurious product, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's a really iconic product and it is a tube of magic. I have tried all of the Sizzly masks, I think, except for the velvet one. And I've tried other bits and pieces of Sizzly skincare. I've had the Black Rose facial oil, I've had the Black Rose moisturiser and um, I had a detox treatment thing. I've tried quite a few of their bits and pieces and I feel like none of them have been so amazing that I've been like you have to have the sizzly one and um, but the Black Rose mask is magical and I feel like no matter what's wrong with my skin that mask sorts it out and um, so it's supposed to be firming and anti-aging but if I get spots it just gets rid of them. It just seems to repair my skin on every front. I absolutely love it and I took it to London with me because it was my birthday whilst I was away and I was like I'm going to use my favourite mask as my like birthday treat and it is making me realise like especially because my skin's not been great since I've come back how much I value that mask and how worth it the price of that mask is to me. As I said tried other Sizzly products don't think any of the others are absolute must-haves but the mask I really really do rate and not having it has made me realise how much I do appreciate having it so that's been a nice sort of skincare realisation. In a similar vein other things that I've been really missing have been my makeup brushes so in my case I have got most of my MAC 217s there's also I think a Zoeva 227 so it's not specifically about it being the MAC 217 but it's about being that shape of brush. Um, I'm also missing my MAC 239 eye brush and my MAC 168 face brush. Last year when I was on my low bad year one of the things that I bought was the Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum brush sets um, and it was £150 something around that and I was sort of seduced by the idea that all my brushes would match and they would all be green which is obviously my colour being ginger. Um, it's my favourite colour anyway, even if I went blonde, green would still be my favourite colour. Um, I've got a green wall there as well behind me in my bedroom, so yeah, big fan of green. Um, so I like the fact that they were green, I really, I just love the idea of them all matching, of them all being the same, but it, it, missing my 217, my 239 and my 168 has made me realise those are the brushes that I use. And all these other, I have got loads of brushes still. I've got loads of brushes that I didn't take away with me. And I don't like any of them as much as the ones that are in my case. And you could probably see that if you watched my pack with me video. Because when I was holding the brushes up I was like, oh the numbers have rubbed off these because they're so old. Because I've had them for years. And they survive every single brush declutter. And I keep all these other ones so that I don't need to wash them quite as often and whatever. 
but it has basically made me realise like if I don't like washing my brushes and I want to have more brushes so that I don't need to do that quite as often, then get backups of these brushes that I actually really like and stop buying sets and stop buying multiples and stop trying other ones because basically this has made me realise 217 for the majority of my eye makeup. 239 for when I want to pack a colour onto my lids. A smudger brush to do under and along the lash line if I want it. And like maybe a small detailer brush for if I want to get in at my inner corner. That's the only eye brushes I need. I have loads of brushes and I currently have most of them on hand. And I am constantly missing my 217 and my 239. And on a similar vein, my 168 for my cheeks. I'm using the Katie Jane Hughes <laughs> cheeks brushes at the moment. I'm using other blush brushes that I've got. None of them are the 168. The 168 is just the right size, it's the right shape. I've got quite a round face, so it's it's an angled one, it's quite small. I've got quite a small face as well, so it's it's good for specific product placement. I love it. I shouldn't own all the other brushes that I do. So that's what I've learned from missing my brushes. And then in general, what I'm missing from my case is that I've got quite a lot of my project pan items in my case, and ironically, it's items that I was like, I can't even afford to lose the four days that I'm in London for like working in these. They're items that I really need to concentrate on. And now because I took them to London for four days, uh, I have now not had them for over two weeks because they are in a case that I have not had back yet. So A, just to also highlight here, my project pan updates then might be a little bit skewed because they'll probably be a bit later by the time I get uh, this stuff back and then we'll probably have a shorter one for between August and September so if you're a project pan watcher that's that's just to give you a heads up of that but it has made me realise there's stuff from my project pan that's in there that I'm only using for the sake of using it up which is fine because sometimes that's that's the only reason to put something in a project pan is just because it gives you that sort of incentive to concentrate on it to use it up and to get it moved out but my Hourglass palette is in there and before I had spoken to BA and they told me I definitely have a container number and it's definitely at Glasgow, I was really contemplating the reality of not getting my case back and not getting my stuff back and it made me realise like that palette has now been through I think three different project pans with me. I have finished, I finished three of the powders completely from it that are six in it or were six in it all together, three are finished. Um, and I'm working on one of the blushes in it in this year's project pan. When I was really really contemplating the idea of not getting it back, it made me realise how sad I would actually be about that. It made me realise how much I actually really appreciate the work that I've put into it so far and how much I want to keep working on that palette. I really want the, the satisfaction of emptying a full palette and I'm not the quickest project panner in the world at all. I'm not the quickest at using things up. I feel like I'm not a very good project panner but looking at it and looking at actually what that palette represents and how many projects that palette represents and the fact that I was already definitely planning to continue it next year with another product from it it just made me realise how much I'm, I'm so glad that I started project panning and um, even though it can feel frustrating and even though I don't think I'm the greatest at it looking at it taking the step back out of the monthly updates and looking at it in the bigger picture it just really hammered home for me that I'm really glad that I set off down this path really glad that I started project panning you know as much as I'm really missing my sizzly mask and my cleanser and as much as it really signifies a change in my attitude to shopping that I have not just been delighted to be presented with the idea of being able to replace them and that overall that is a good change. Missing the other stuff has shown a change in my attitude in that the way I've reacted to not having it is different because in the past I would have either a hardly missed it because I would have had so many other products that would have done equivalent jobs or B, love the excuse to go out and purchase either the same thing or a sort of equivalent or newer or more exciting version that I wanted to try. So there, that, there's been a change there that I'm really, really happy about. But this is almost like a different kind of change in that it just, it would break my heart if I lost that palette now because I, I used to hate when my makeup looked used. I used to hate when things didn't look pristine. 
and my taste has completely changed in that like now that I've been doing makeup rehab for like four years and um, I love seeing palettes that have pans in them I love seeing palettes that you know are half used have you know clearly been traveled with have been loved I like that's what I see when I see those palettes now is like how much love someone has put into that palette to use it up to use that much to have that much of an impact on it versus when things look pristine and completely untouched I'm like well that's lovely but you don't love that do you because you've not gone into it that much so it's really signified a change in my taste and my approach and how that, how I view things but it's also made me realise it, this was something I'd realised already anyway but it's really hammered home for me. I know how long it has taken me to get that palette from looking pristine and new to looking the way that it does now. Um, I also know that the, the top row of products that I finished, two of them were face powders, one was a highlight um, and that the bottom row of products is taking me longer because they are more of a colour product so it's two blushes and a bronzer that's in the bottom row. It's made me realise like I would so much more value spending next year working on another blush from that palette and knocking it out and progressing towards actually having the satisfaction of emptying a palette than I would buying another blush and bringing it in because one of the products that I was I didn't buy but I was very tempted to buy in London was the Dolce & Gabbana the new blush duo kind of um I'll show you so I have two of them already that I got last year haven't used either of them because as much as I love seeing things looking beaten up when they're very very new and when they're like this and that they're very fancy and they've got patterns it does kind of put me off starting to use them but then once I get into using them um you know I actually I really like it because my Shantikai highlight that's in my um project pan started like that had a beautiful embossing on it absolutely loved it but now that I've worked through that I'm really enjoying just actually using the product and um, that's in my case and I'm really really missing that more more that I'm missing that specific product than that it's made me realize anything but I'm very much missing it but anyway it's these blushes from Dolce and Gabbana and that's what they look like in the inside so they're like a jewel and they brought out a new colour this summer and I really want the new colour, I swatched it in Harrods. Now have I used either of the other two? No, because it's almost like I love things to look used or new. The, the start of the in between is not, doesn't thrill me and I know that I can't use those blushes and suddenly make them look used because I've got a blush in my project pan and it's the blush that's in that palette that is stuck in my case and I'd rather work on that blush than work on a new one and I'd rather spend next year working on another blush from that palette than buy the the blush that I didn't buy in London and I'm really it's made me really glad I didn't buy the blush because it's made me realize how much I want to just keep working in that palette next year yeah that's really signified a change in my attitude to using makeup and buying makeup. I've always kind of said like I think project panning does change your attitude to that because you really do realise how long it takes you to use stuff up but I didn't realise it had changed me to the extent that not having that palette would be as frustrating for me as it currently is right now because I want to be working on it and I want to be making that progress and not being able to do that is really bothering me which is a good thing, I think. Anyway, so that was the first part of the video, was me just telling you what I'd realised about how much I was missing things and what that kind of, what those different things signified in terms of changes to my attitude and things. I've actually got Covid, by the way, um, so I'm sorry if my, my voice sounds uh, completely off. Uh, I don't think it, it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Well, I'm actually a negative now. Today is my first day negative after having had it for uh, eight days of being positive. So I feel much better and I definitely sound much better, but I don't know if I actually sound completely normal yet. So uh, yeah, sorry if my voice is really nasally or whatever. But anyway, that was the kind of first half of the video. And as I was kind of having these realisations for myself, I was really, really pleased about them. I don't think I started getting smug. I don't think I'm a naturally, like, 
overly smug self congratulatory kind of person. I don't I don't kind of mean it like that, but I think it's it's quite good to temper being too proud of oneself with the uh, you know <laughs> the sort of warning on the side and that's that's actually what this part of the video um is about is I, I was kind of feeling like I've really changed and hmm this has kind of crept up and I didn't quite notice my mindset changing that kind of much until I'm reflecting on it now and blah 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 and I thought I, I'm gonna look at how much this changed because it, it made me realise how much my mindset has really changed and I was like I wonder what my collection actually looks like now compared to when I started um, you know down this route and I thought because my mind had changed so much that my collection was also going to have changed so much and as you might be able to guess that's actually not really the case. I do think maybe that's partly because I think it takes a while, like as much as I'm saying this, like this is my fourth year of my changed behaviours, but I think it really does take a while to solidify into your mind because you're learning so constant and not that I'm done learning at all, I've still got so much to learn, I know that, but like you know the first year that I did it, 2018, I totally went into that thinking I'll do a year long no buy and that'll be it, everything will be under control and it will be fine and, and that wasn't the case. And I kind of thought, oh I've, I've really changed so much now that I'm going to be in a completely different place, which is not the case. So what I've got here are my 2019 opening values and quantities. Now in 2018 I hadn't counted quantities, I'd only counted values, um, but also in 2018 that was the first time I'd ever done my inventory and I spent like days on it. I remember making it at the start of 2018 and then just finding stuff as the year went on. It wasn't that I was buying stuff, it was that I would like open a handbag that I hadn't used for three months and there'd be a makeup bag in it. Um, so 2018, I think the opening numbers maybe weren't the full picture. So I've gone for my 2019 opening numbers because I feel like it's maybe a more even starting point of I probably found all the stuff that I hadn't had at the start of 2018 in the inventory and I'd also through 2018 would have moved out all the sort of half used and like samples and things that I was going to use really quickly that would kind of skewer the numbers for average use. So we're going to start with 2019 and in 2019 I opened my hair care inventory with 113 products worth $2,117.05. In 2022 I have opened my hair care inventory with 95 products worth $1,728.69. So there is a reduction, but for being four years into completely changing my habits, it's not that much of a reduction. Skincare, in 2019 I opened with 381 products worth $7,626.79. 2022, I've got 248 products, so we've definitely brought skincare down a good chunk. Really, really happy with that change in quantity. But value-wise, they're worth $5,263.62. So the actual value isn't down all that much, really. But really, really pleased quantity-wise. Now, perfume has actually increased. So perfume in 2019, what well, I had 29 perfumes worth $1,984. Then in 2022, I've really got into perfume in the last couple of years. That's I've really consistently asked for perfume um, for birthdays and Christmases and things. So I currently, or in, at the start of 2022, I had 54 perfumes worth $4,913.92. I had already definitely said my perfumes spiralled a little bit in the last couple of years. I think perfume's such a giftable thing as well when I got into it. Um, it it's a really easy thing to say to some if somebody's looking to buy you a gift to say like I, I liked X, Y and Z. In the last number of years, unless there's been a particular collection or launch that I've been really really interested in that I've asked then um, for items from that for my birthday or Christmas or whatever, um, I've not really been getting the same amount of makeup gifts that I might have once upon a time got. Uh, so I think perfume became quite a natural segue for that almost when people were looking for gift ideas for me. 
So my perfume definitely ramped up, but I knew that already and you know, I've put perfumes into my project pans in 2022 and I've been really making an effort to use my samples and try and get them finished. So I do think 2023 will bring that down a, quite a good bit. But makeup, which is and has always been the, the thing that's been the most out of control because it's always been the thing that I've gone through the slowest because it takes the longest to use. In 2019, I had 822 makeup products worth $17,393.43. And in 2022, we opened with 671 products, so about 150 less, so I'm really, really pleased with that. But again, similar to the hair care, the value hasn't gone down all that much. It's um, gone down by about £2,000 to $15,365.06. So that means my total, 2019, across all categories, I had 1,345 products worth $29,121.27. And in 2022, I've opened having 1,068 products and they are worth $27,271.29. That doesn't sound like a great reduction on its own. And I was like, how can that be the case? Because I have been tracking my empties for the past number of years and like I've hit reverse rouge every single year. I was like, I've definitely brought down more stuff through usage and I know I've got better at the decluttering in the last couple of years. And I've also not been shopping because I've been on my no buy. So the only times I've been shopping or bringing stuff in is if I'm on holiday, which has been like, you know, a short amount of time to accumulate stuff in. If I've got stuff for birthdays or Christmases, which is generally then stuff I've specifically asked for, or I have been allowed to buy replacements in some of my skincare categories are at a point where I do need to buy replacements, but the replacements are one in, one out. So that shouldn't actually be affecting, you know, that should be stagnant rather than being up and down kind of thing overall. And then things that I get for free, so like samples and things. And I'm coming to the conclusion I get a lot of skincare samples just even when I do like buy skincare replacements, I get samples in there. I definitely know that there's been a huge decrease in my shopping and in my accumulating and in my bringing in, but there actually can't have been because in 2019, I used up hair care wise, $301.69 worth of stuff across 23 products. 2020, I used $262.33 across 22 products. And in 2021, I used up 29 hair care products worth $346.21. So my total hair care used in 2019, 20 and 21 was 74 products worth $910.23. But I haven't dropped by that amount. I've gone from having 113 products to 95 products. So I have dropped, but I've obviously had a stream of things coming in, even when I've not been shopping. So I feel like doing this has made me be like, I need to examine the flow in because I know it's not been shopping and I know for hair care in particular, it's not been shopping because I'm just not that excited by hair care. It's, it's the smallest category and always has been and has remained the smallest category for a reason. And that is because I'm just not all that bothered about hair care. I've got what I have. I like what I have and I'll use it, but it takes me just to use it up. So. I'm not out there buying multiple volume sprays or anything. Like my hair care, when you actually look at my inventory, is the most under control, but it's not gone down by 74 products. But what that also means is that in an average year, and I think this is worth working out, for hair care, I averagely have used 24 and a half products every year worth $303.40 now, I think. In terms of the usage, the quantity is more relevant than the value because I could use one Sizzly skincare product worth $150 and it would be one product or I could use, you know, 10 products from the Inkey list worth $15 and it would be the same value but I would have used a lot more products. So I think the, the quantities are a bit more relevant. Um, I do think if you're looking to give yourself a fright, the values are very useful. Um, because that definitely motivated me at the start to be like, oh my word, this is, like, my collection is worth this and that could have been a deposit on a house, realistically. The values, I think, are really, really important because it does make you think about 
what else that money could go towards and in, in thinking about it in that cumulative way as opposed to like because even a luxury lipstick is what like 40 pounds or something like it's it's a lot of money for a lipstick but 40 pounds is not going to get you a holiday or something like that do you know what I mean as individual products they're justifiable and I think that's partly why it became such an out of control thing for me is that individually all these things were justifiable but when you look at the totals it's like that's a lot of money so I do think it's totally worth doing the inventory and doing the values but I think the quantity is much more reflective of how much you can actually use so how much you can then justify buying um, in terms of the amounts rather than the values if that makes sense. Skincare numbers are a little bit skewed because actually in 2019, 2020 my perfume was in with my skincare. I didn't separate it out until 2021 so these might be a little touch off but 2019 I used $2,989.66 worth of skincare and it was 164 products. 2020 I used 140 products worth $1,849.44 and in 2021 112 products worth 2228.71 so my total skincare used across the three years was 416 products worth $7,067.81 that gives me an average each year of using up 138 and a half skincare products worth $2,355.94 so that does tell me if that's my average and this year I have opened with 248 products worth $5,263.62 in terms of the quantity if I used up 138 and a half products this year I would be down to just over 100 products of skincare life which would mean in another year in theory it would be empty now of course it's not going to be that simple because there will be things that I'm using that I'm replacing and things that I'm using that I'm not replacing so like if I finish my serum I'll bring another serum in uh, but if I finish a face mask I don't repurchase it because I've got a whole load of face masks to work through so it's not quite as clear cut as that but it does tell me that actually as much as my hair care sounds like it's the most un under control if I use 24 and a half products on average each year and I've got 95 products right now it's going to take me basically four years to work through my hair care stash whereas my skincare sounds higher well is higher but actually it would take me less than two years to to empty my skincare if I used it at the rate that my average indicates and I didn't bring anything else in obviously. The perfume I only have one year that I tried my perfume empties which was last year and I used nine worth $332.77 and um, so obviously we only have one year of perfumes. I'm not too worried because as I said I've been prioritising that this year so I, I think next year perfume will be down and then I'll be able to start getting those averages and keep an eye on it a little bit better. So whilst I'm really glad that I separated it out and did kind of acknowledge as a category this is growing and it is something I need to keep an eye on, I feel like I did that before it got to a point where it was out of control so I'm, I'm not too worried about the perfume but in terms of makeup it's what I own the most of it's what I use the least of basically well I've used more makeup than I have hair care but it's a much higher starting point so as a percentage it's far and away the least that I work through 2019 I used 30 makeup items worth $525.58 2020 I used 25 worth $256 and 2021 I used 26 items worth $465.84 so in three years I used a total of 81 makeup products worth $1,247.42 so that means on average makeup wise each year I have finished 27 products worth $415.81 so if I get 671 products worth $15,365.06 I have pretty much enough makeup to use for the rest of my life at my current usage rate. I just thought it was worth it because I didn't do... So basically if, if you're completely new, um, I was redecorating at the start of this year. A whole load of my stuff was in storage in the loft so I didn't actually do a 2022 opening sit down and talk to you about the numbers video. So I thought it was worth doing a bit of a numbers check in um, to see where we are versus where we were. 
Um, obviously it's halfway through the year so those were my opening numbers and I have started tunneling into them. In 2022 my goal is to use up 300 products so I've really decided to be about the quantities this year rather than the values. So I am hoping for a really really good reduction between the start and end of 2020, 2020, 2020. Um, so I am hoping for a really good reduction between the opening and closing values of 2022's inventory. Fingers crossed that we manage that but yeah I thought it was worth flagging like I have made huge changes um, and I have made huge changes and I'm not going to take that away from myself. I have made massive changes, um, you know, to my attitude, to the way that I consume, to the way that I think about things. As I said in the first half, I've made changes that I didn't even realise had been made because they've been made over time and they've set in over time. It's not been enough to actually get the stuff completely under control yet. So I think it, it was just worth taking that time to reflect on how long a journey this is actually going to be unless I really ramp up my changes, unless I really really declutter more and yeah I, I don't have a lot of conclusions on those thoughts, those thoughts are now in my mind. So I thought it would be interesting to have a chat with you about them, let you know where I was at, let you know where my head was at. Uh, I hope it's been interesting, I know it's been quite a kind of long rambly very self-reflective video so it's been really useful for me um but i hope it's been vaguely interesting for you guys as well um so fingers crossed i get my luggage back and my next updates for my project pans should be coming at you in the next couple of weeks because that's what i really i need my stuff back so i can get on, on track with my project pans that's that's the priorities uh, absolutely what i think we're taking away from this is project pan use stuff up reduce the reduce the stash that is the way forward and um, thank you very much for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you in my next update bye